So um, you heal your spine, your your coma. Okay, let's talk about you coming out of coma because yes. because of diabetes. Was yes. It? Okay, and um, they say when you go through coma, near death experiences, you kind of your life changes and you see things differently. Yes. Um, from what I know of you, you always saw things differently. But what <laughs> was what did the coma do to you each time? Did it make you even more? Oh, traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it just, you, you feel your, that any moment of your life can be lost. So mm -hmm. you basically, you're happier mm -hmm. for that, that mm -hmm. you, it could have ended yesterday mm -hmm. but today is another day and I can appreciate it when I wake up in the morning and I say to myself okay no coma happened I'm alive and sometimes when I wake up and it's very quiet mm -hmm. I feel oh I probably maybe I'm already dead ah. <laughs> I start checking I go I open the window and I'm checking that they can hear, hear something some yes but but what you say in a such a smiling <laughs> with such a smiling face is something that I think the whole humanity needs to practice, and uh, in fact that brings me to to a question or a topic that artists, uh, people who are actively practicing art, you know, in every day in some form or the other, how important do you think it is for artists specifically to get into this sort of understanding? The reason I ask is, I know a lot of people personally who are am amazing artists within quotes, as in their art and the skill is really amazing, but they end up becoming a prisoner to their own minds and then that takes them all over the place and then they get into a mode of complaint when, you know, artists are not paid on time, artists are going through an unstable career and there's 20,000 things they go through. Artists complain that they are more sensitive, so they get more affected. Mm. So how does an artist who is supposed to be the sensitive person in the world, how does how important is this understanding of life to an artist? By this you mean <coughs> what? So I'm sure what you just said yes. is important for each person in the yes. world. But yes. also I feel for artists, we have a special gift and everything. But most of the times we have mental health issues. Mm -hmm. We have issues of feeling lonely. We have issues mm -hmm. of feeling ungrateful. Yes. H how important is it for artists to have your kind of viewpoint? Mm, it's very difficult for me to say because I'm not in the body of another person. Mm. And I can only speak for myself. Yourself. Um, I am what I am because of the paths I constantly choose mm. um, and I know what it is to be a mm. victim, mm. feel like a victim mm. and live a life of a victim mm. but you can change it mm. and as you change it you see you have different experience of life mm -hmm. and um, it's just different. I, I don't, I don't want to say that 
how other people live is wrong mm. Mm. or they could be better no they could be definitely different yes and we we here sort of as we live we try different things we meet different people we see different colors it's all about all this i guess maybe a joy of seeing feeling and experience all this different things and mm -hmm. that might include negative things mm -hmm. as well it's just mm -hmm. whether you want to be in that experience mm -hmm. in them for so long mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's always your choice mm -hmm. so i cannot speak for other people i can only say that for myself mm -hmm. that's what i've learned that you just have to be happy mm -hmm. because you're alive still alive yes yeah so mm, okay so that's another powerful thing she just said about not being able to speak for someone else because we actually can't we may think that this is what that person should do or i should do or this is but at the end of the day um if a person like you is shining not just through art but through the kind of life you've led you're naturally inspiring me and 20 other people and 20,000 other people and that will happen and I think we'll have a ripple effect of this attitude of really being grateful about just being able to breathe and hear sounds and <laughs> you woke up and check outside <laughs> if there's any sound or anything yes um, all right so uh, moving on to your part the, the part of your life where you started actively pursuing arts um, and uh, living like that just completely as an artist so have people uh, how do i ex explain this um have people really seen through your art or are they enjoying your art or do you think people are a little they say oh we don't connect or how how connected do you feel with the people who come and see your art mm -hmm. oh that's, that's a good question well N not that many people actually see my art, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't have that much exposure. Um, not to say that there is not much to see, there is. Mm -hmm. um, so I've had different uh, responses to my art mm -hmm. um, all through my life, completely different. So including in when I was exhibiting in Kazakhstan and there was not internet at the time everything was printed news mm. and magazines i was completely trashed mm. in the media mm. uh, and the exhibition that i was organizing mm -hmm. so i was not accepted mm -hmm. and, um, so it was viewed as someone with mental illness mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. deranged mm -hmm. and um, there, there is that way to see mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, and they also have people, met people who like yourself, who mm. enjoy my art and mm. um, have them in their collections. Mm -hmm. And it's actually all over the world. Mm. Um, I was commissioned to do paintings and, and when I was a child I used to give my paintings as gifts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some people have them when I wasn't even selling anything, mm -hmm. I tend to... Mm. give my art away mm -hmm. and I enjoy it when someone connects mm -hmm. to you mm -hmm. I don't expect people to connect to me no mm -hmm. um, so if someone does it's it's amazing mm -hmm. um, yes I lost it no so you know um, what I was really um, inspired by right now with what you said the first round of your painting at that Kazakhstan exhibition or mm -hmm. something they didn't accept you uh, I think this is the same story with all great artists not just paint I'm saying even in the field of music that I'm in or any other field when you come up with a revolutionary thought and you're a visionary you see things you see life with a different vision uh, naturally that is the first thing that happens to you people can't deal with that and uh, in a way uh, I feel um, people not connecting to you and that being the first experience of your life in that sense in a, in mm -hmm. a bigger place yes. has also shaped you to get to a point where you know you don't care what it is you yes. you're just making your art every day when I call her or I see her she's always at it with her art she doesn't care 
whether anyone is responding today or someone is not or someone responding really well and said oh Yulia you're great or someone says we didn't connect at all she doesn't I think you are completely disconnected from that response doing anything to your art so well I don't know if it's a good thing mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. not to care mm -hmm. but then I cannot be something that I'm not really mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I cannot tailor mm -hmm. for you know a group of people mm -hmm. to, to please them with something let's mm -hmm. say mm -hmm. minimalism or to create something that would suit an interior and thinking mm -hmm. that this is what people would probably most likely buy I mm -hmm. don't do it I I guess I never thought also that I would live that long mm -hmm. so I never thought to kind of what to make a career out mm -hmm. of art mm -hmm. I just thought okay I'm probably gonna die in the moment so in, in the process Might as well make so what I, I just would yes correct so I didn't um, I don't know if if it's the uh, right thinking um, not to think mm -hmm. and not, to, plan about and not to think about your potential customers mm -hmm. and whatever mm -hmm. that exists and um, it can be viewed mm -hmm. as a positive and negative, negative. depends right. on which side you are very easy diabetics die very yeah, easy yeah, 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 yeah. and when you're alone and you fall asleep and when, when it's happening to me i know that if i fall asleep you want to sleep very strongly, strongly. And yet, but something That's tells it. you you will go and you cannot go now <laughs> it's just something whatever it was it was shaking me not to sleep mm -hmm. i don't think it mattered because it was throwing all this yeah, 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 yeah. Juice. it was just not letting you sleep um, and you would have slept otherwise Yes, and another thing, because I was talking to Ilya when he left, um, mm. he said, how can an orange juice be next to you when I left you last night? It was in the fridge. And I don't oh, know God. how. I don't know how. Also, if it was... How it, someone has to undo o this. Open yes, it. Yes, exactly. Because I wouldn't... Just it fell, I think it, it was like an open bottle placed there. Could be that or whatever. So... Um, Yes, with this bottle it was very, very strange. I always have honey, in me, but mm. it was a bottle as well, so very strange. Let's do it. Mm. But they had funny incidents like this. You know, when a refrigerator door gets you stuck oh on God. the floor and you think, oh my God, when I'm discovered, everyone would think a lawyer committed suicide by suffocating himself with a refrigerator door. So, okay, so with the question of your, I'm going to skip back to the question of your health and how you managed to live through all of that. And do you think there was, uh, of course, you healed your body in many ways, you healed your mind, you healed yes, your spirit. But, but uh, do you think there were other protective elements in your life that kind of protected you? Yes, you're asking this question because you know. Exactly. Yes. I know. I know about and I've also been <laughs> lucky enough to meet one of her most important protectors, uh, which My is cat. her cat. So let's have a chat about your protector. Mm, yes, I, um, I have a cat who I probably can say saved my life on many occasions because he feels at night um, if my blood sugar drops, he wakes me up. Because so you know, before, before you explain this, let's tell everyone how this works. So when you have a blood sugar drop, yes, uh, what yes. usually happens physiologically? What happens if your blood sugar drops too low, mm -hmm. no glucose goes, I guess, to your brain. Mm -hmm. you, your brain is no longer working properly. And, and I think you, you have up? a few hours before you actually die. Right. So, but sometimes you can wake up in the process as if you just before the going Dying. completely mm. yes you can wake up and I used to wake up completely paralyzed mm -hmm. so it's quite often happened but mm -hmm. there are different sp stages um, before the actual coma where you can stop it mm -hmm. you know when you have um, feelings or of being dizzy and lots of things but when you sleep you don't have you don't know you don't yeah. know yeah. and you basically can fall asleep and um, never wake up and this happens to people right the yes. people who have no, the issues yes yes so now let's understand what this cat does mm -hmm. for her uh, every time she goes through this yes he uh, 
when he feels that my blood sugar is dropping, he jumps on me and literally wakes me up, scratches my eyes out until I wake up. But and how, other, how does he know that your blood sugar I have is no dropping? No idea. He feels it. Like that's that's called magic. Oh God! Animals and, feel it. And I does suppose. he on normal days when you're sleeping? Does he do that just to get some? No, 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 no. no. Only no, on those he, days. Just when... on those days, yes. And as he wakes me up, I already know that I have to run to the fridge or take a glucose next to my bed. Does right. Have to? And how 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 many times has this happened? Like once or twice? Or well, it used. To, I I have now a device that helps me and monitor my blood mm -hmm. sugar, but it used to happen a lot. Uh, three times a week. Oh my God! It used to happen a lot. Yes. Mm. Okay. So, any recent uh, incident that you want to share with us about? No, I don't want to share. But <laughs> if you insist, of course. Oh, I insist. do insist. <laughs> In the recent one, yes, it was a funny one. It's it happened just a few days ago, and that before that it um, happened something similar to that happened probably 15 years ago mm -hmm. so we, we're talking about a long okay. right. sort of time that passed it's when i wake i woke up mm -hmm. and uh, not my cat my cat didn't wake me up mm -hmm. i woke up paralyzed so i know i cannot move my body mm -hmm. and uh, i s sort of know that there should be sugar next to my bed, mm -hmm. but I cannot reach it. Because and you can't move? You, uh, yes, when you Can paralyzed. you see? No, well, at, in my vision was when I woke up, focused just for a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but after that, it went blurry. Mm -hmm. You basically, you don't see anything. Mm -hmm. um, and I've noticed just <laughs> as I woke up that my cat was standing and watching me in the, mm -hmm. sort of in the doorway. He mm. wasn't um, next to me, wasn't jumping on me or trying to help me. Mm. Which, which is strange. Because yes, very, very strange. The, this yes, cat has yes. always woken you up. Yes. So, but, uh, yeah. what I literally felt, I mean, that can sound crazy to most of the people, mm. but I felt that I, something just dropped me to the floor. Mm -hmm. So, it dropped me to the floor because I needed to get the sugar. How did I get my sugar? The bottle that was standing next to the bed, it flipped and, and started pouring <laughs> down on my face. Mm. And what was it? Um, and it was orange. Orange. So okay. it was pouring down on on my exactly on my head, mm -hmm. and I just had to bend it. Mm. So a lot of it, a lot of orange just went into my hair. My <laughs> yes. ear, a lot of but it. But did anything go but to your mouth? <laughs> it, it did, it did, it did, and um, and uh, obviously I knew that there is a bottle with honey standing. It's a plastic bottle, of honey. but it's up there, and then someone drops it on me as well on the floor, mm. so I cannot reach it in. Was there but a storm? By any chance, <laughs> wind is blowing in your house. Exactly, no. But there was something, or something, um, I mean, you call them angels, I don't mm -hmm. know what they are, because I, I couldn't see it, but I could feel that some, someone was doing something. And as I was um, having the sugar, I was waiting on the floor until it works so I can stand up. Mm -hmm. And as I get to feel a little bit more of my body, mm. I could feel that something was going through me, around me, mm -hmm. around my waist mm -hmm. and lifting me up. Mm. It was literally like something was shaking, shaking me, you. shaking me and not letting me sleep because at this time you actually want to sleep. Mm -hmm. It's something that you feel really is the most comfortable and natural thing to do. Mm. But it's also maybe some part, if you refer to your brain, which recognizes that you mm. are unwell, tells you, well, if you go to sleep now, you, you, won't get you will not get up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But regardless, something was physically keeping me like uh, awake. Moving, yeah. yeah. Moving, yes. It was, I was lifted up by something that felt like an octopus, huge arm of something, mm -hmm. like a huge... Um, endless balloon mm -hmm. 
cycle. Engulfing wrapping you, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. wrapping you and then yeah. lifting you up. And right. I literally lifting you up. And I, because my legs were completely paralyzed, I would lift up halfway mm -hmm. and then drop. Draw. And I, I would lift up several times. And then I started saying, look, I, <laughs> I am okay. I'm just waiting. I am not asleep. I'm not going to go to sleep. As a like literally talking to that who was doing it to me and, um, and then when i went um to the bathroom to wash my head it's already when i was able to walk maybe mm -hmm. 30 40 minutes after mm -hmm. when i could stand and have a funny walk mm -hmm. it's just um you can imagine you just got very, out of a par paralytic yes. attack yeah. <laughs> it's a very strange way you walk yeah and you kind of it's funny i mean i laugh at it it probably looks sad but I laugh at myself and it's like you're learning to walk again, again. and move. Mm. So I go to a hot bath because you feel completely cold and mm -hmm. you don't actually feel that much. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a bathtub, my cat is next to me and he is tracing a shape of something in the air. Mm -hmm. Like literally tracing and it's not a fly. But you can't it's see anything. I cannot see anything. And there Can is you no see any on, smoke not, or anything? No, no, nothing. nothing. You can't see anything. Absolutely okay. nothing. Um, I just feel that this presence of something is near me, but also the cat Can feels see it, it and sees it. He mm. sees it. He actually sees it and and he does the sniffing, you know, Trying gesture. To smell it. Yes, mm. smell it. And uh, if you give a dog or a cat your hand, mm. it would maybe try to smell. It was like this, as if someone as if something tried that to play. Yes. Yeah. Or someone maybe they did whoever it was tried to give him. Something. Uh, something, yes, and to eat or, or to yeah, pet, oh, pet yeah. him. I don't know. Mm, mm. Maybe that's the way to play with. And yes, that's. And when I have things like this, they make me feel that you're meant for something, and until you do it, they wouldn't let you die. Mm. It's almost you're protected for some special reason. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what that reason is, but it's quite. A powerful experience. Mm -hmm. You actually feel, mm. I don't know, ghosts, angels, some other force. I guess you can say, lots of people will say, well, she's diabetic coma, hallucinations. I know what hallucination is. Mm -hmm. Even when I'm about to have it or had it, mm -hmm. I would register it as a hallucination. Right. It's something that I know in my mind. I defer different stages. Yes. It's, uh, I know when I had a hallucination. Mm. because of my low blood sugar mm. and I know when it is happening in real when I'm already awake mm -hmm. mm. fully awake and someone's shaking me right you know this right. is something that I can right. defer because I just experienced it now right. in comp okay I cannot walk mm. I cannot move my body very well but I can feel what is happening and I'm already actually at that point I already had my vision focused back mm -hmm. so although I so didn't you see couldn't anything, have yeah yes for me because I know the different stages that is not a hallucination right. organic stage yeah I mean it could be hallucination if it was a visual thing you saw somebody mm. or you saw some yes, yes. octopus or whatever <laughs> figure we call it yes. but this was not about you seeing it this was about your body yeah, actually being, being lifted, lifted up, up and yes, down yes. to the point where you get so shaken mm. up you say please stop, stop. Yes. you know i mean that 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 doesn't sound like a hallucination and um, and then after i was walking already mm -hmm. you know i could see my cat seeing something mm. so obviously there's some kind of energy that even though I don't see, anyone can see. Right, and also the, the first question when you were describing this, the first question that came to my mind is, why did her cat betray her? Because yes. it seems yes. like the cat also, which yes. has saved your life so many times is standing there and just watching the whole scene of you feeling yes. paralyzed. But he's not probably watching you getting paralyzed, he's watching the other because thing. Something else it's can trying yes. to save you yes. and he's not getting in the way.